Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 6, Section 3 in McDougall Littell's 8th grade textbook. Today we're solving equations involving fractions and decimals. Now, when we're solving equations that involve fractions and decimals, the golden rule is that the answer should be in the same form of the problem. So if the problem's got all fractions in it, your answer should at the end be a fraction. If the problem's got all decimals in it, your answer at the end should be a decimal. Unless, of course, it would work out to be a perfect whole number, in which case you just leave the whole number. But otherwise, for all these problems, the answer should be in the same form as the problem. All right. Now you can see at the bottom of that left-hand column, there's a procedure described for how to work with fractions, and there's a procedure described for how to work with decimals. With fractions, you have to get a common denominator once you get a common denominator, you'll multiply the whole equation by the denominator and then solve. Working with decimals, we'll move the decimals equal to the number of places in the longest decimal and then we'll solve. Again, for fractions, we'll get a common denominator multiply the equation by the denominator, and then solve. Decimals, we'll move decimals equal to the number of places in the longest decimal, and then solve. All right, so let's start with decimals, because decimals are a little bit easier than fractions to work with. In example one, I have 0 0.17 plus plus 0.025n equals 0 0.11 plus 0.041n. 0 0.17 plus 0.025n equals 0 0.11 plus 0. 0.041n. Now you could work with this equation just like it is. You don't have to change a thing. You could work with the decimals the whole way through and get the right answer. It'd take a lot of work, but you get the right answer. There's an easier way. That was what we described over there in that left hand column. Here's what you're going to do you're going to look at the problem and say, okay. Which one has the most number of digits after the decimal point? If I look at all these decimals, this one has three numbers after the decimal, and this one also has three numbers after the decimal. A 0, a 2, and a 5, or a 0, 4, and a 1. Okay, three numbers after the decimal. Whichever one is the longest, you're going to take and move the decimal in every single part that number of times. I'll say that again. You're going to take, for whichever one's the longest, okay, we said three in this one, I'm going to take the decimal and move it that number of times in every part. So I said the longest one had three things after the decimal, so in each part I'm going to move the decimal three times over. So here I'm going to move it three times over, here I'm going to move it three times over, here I'm going to move it three times over. Here I'm going to move it three times over. Now, a lot of people say, well, what are you doing? Okay? Moving it three times over is like multiplying by 1,000. Okay? You're multiplying by a factor of 10. But most times when I say that, people go, well, what, what, what are you talking about? So I just tell you to move the decimal. I don't worry about the scientific reason. I just tell you to move the decimal. Okay. So I'm going to go through and take care of all that. So. Empty hoops get zeros, so this is going to become 170. This one, 0, 0.25, or just 25n. This one, empty hoop gets a zero, 110. This one, 3 over 41n. And look at that. The decimals are gone. The thing we didn't like to start with is now gone. Yes? Why should you move the decimal three times? Three times, because that's how many times it takes to get it out of the way in the longest one. 
three times there gets it out of the way, three times there gets out of the way. So you got to do it three times and everything. Okay. Now that I've done that, final problem. It's just what we've been doing the last several days now. Okay. I'm going to get variable things on the left, lonesome numbers over on the right. So I've got to move 41n over. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Because I'm, I'm out of space here already. I'm going to move 170 in the same step. Now, 170 doesn't have anything in front of it, which remember means it's positive. The opposite of a positive is a negative, and negative looks like subtraction. So I've got to subtract 170 from each side. So 25n minus 41n, that's negative 16n. 110 minus 170 is negative 6. Okay? No big deal. It's a multiplication problem. We know multiplication equations get solved by dividing. So I've got to divide each side by negative 16. That'll give me n equals, oh, this is something like 3 and a third. Hang on. Or a third. Nope, 3.75. And there you go. So really, other than the first step, which was the move in the decimal, everything else you've done. You solved equations all week and last week, and we did all this. It's just that one new step at the beginning that will hopefully, hopefully, make the problem easier for you. All right, let's take a look at example two. 1.4x minus 1.8 plus 2.35x equals 0 0.21. 1.4x. Minus 1.8 plus 2.35x equals 0 0.21. Okay, 